it's your girl Barbie J here and we are talking about Delilah season one episode nine the long game that's right the long game now I apologize I am late this was supposed to be up on Tuesday night Wednesday morning y'all know I did the oval but I gotta tell you what happened I had to get up early um, Wednesday morning because your girl Barbie J here just signed up to do background work for TV shows and movies and films. So they called me to do some background work. And I'm like, for one of those spinoffs, those uh, power book spinoffs, so I'm going to be in one of those episodes. And we were there all night. I'm exhausted. I think I got maybe four hours sleep this morning. So... I am putting this out late. I am so sorry. Like I said, it is Thursday. I should have had it out Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. But y'all might get to see me on some other shows. And if I find out when those episodes are airing, I will definitely let you guys know. But wish me luck. Wish Barbie J luck. Hey. And then keep me in prayer because my dad, my dad had to go back into the hospital. So just keep my dad in prayer. And that's it. So shout out to everybody in my comment section. Thank you for staying so loyal to me. I love you guys. Um, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now. Please hit that little subscribe button on one of these sides. I don't know where it is. It's either red or white. Just hit it and subscribe. And then if you hit the notification bell next to it, that'll let you know every time Barbie J uploads a new video. And what else? Don't forget to check out my... Um, Sister Junebug uh, Spring Extravaganza video. You will love the singing and you will love my hats. I have the fanciest, flyest hats that I am modeling through this um, concert. And I think you're going to get a kick out of my alter ego. That's right. Barbie J has an alter ego called Sister Junebug. So anyway, let's get started. With Delilah, this episode was really good. This episode was good, and it was long, and I try to, I, I don't understand. I try to cut out as much as possible, not, not to give. I try to give detail, but not too much. But it's just so hard with this show. It's so much going on. So it starts off with, you know, Leah, Leah and Delilah, they're outside because she's asking him, asking her, was she involved in Gary Shea's death? And, um... And you see um, Demetria and um, Harper trying to peek through the window. And when she turns around, they run and stuff. But she seemed to know some stuff. And this damn Leah. I, I, uh, Leah's a trip. But anyway, she Delilah asked her for a sworn statement. Because she make a sworn statement. And she's like, no, I want to settle. You know, I, ooh, by the end of this episode... I'm going to want to jump in the screen and punch Leah myself. And I'm surprised y'all won't want it to want to do it as well. So then we have the mediation day and Harper tries to speak to Leah ahead of time to let her know what happened with her and how she took that check. But when she took that check, she was selling her soul and she was trying to explain that to her when Tamara walked in. And so Leah is pissed at Tamara. She feels that she's the one who, you know, broke into her apartment. So she goes in a... <sighs> excuse you ladies and walks away and walks and, and then next thing you know Delilah's there and Delilah comes and asks Tamara to come in and and they start talking and she's telling her she you know she want she wanted to discuss that verbiage that she needed to be put into the paperwork so that they could do the settlement she said it was important to have that but you know Tamara was like I'll try I'll try she whatever. Fred Osborne walks in. <laughs> He's looking around. Harper just looks at him like with disgust. And he was like, Fred Osborne, she's like, the conference room is right there. That's the conference room. You got a problem with it? He's like, no. Cute. And walks in. He's an idiot. He seemed like an ass. Doesn't he, y'all? He do. Y'all let me know down in the comment section, but that's what he seemed like to me. Then we got Katya she gets into her feelings because here she is. She's moving in with her man and she thinks she all that. And he's letting her know that um his daughter is going to be having her a recital coming up. And she's been practicing. And 
Katya wants to go so bad because, hey, you moved in here. You moving in here with me don't mean you get to go to my children's stuff. People, when y'all moving together, know this. Unless them kids like you or care enough about you, you don't show up and cause any issues at their events, at their family events. You just don't. It's it's let's 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 use our brains as we mature. I mean, it is what it is. Okay, especially if it's the kids' event, because then they gotta be hurt. Anyway, what else? Um, he's letting her know it was Maya's important audition, and and she's like Oh, so I want to be there and everything for him. And he's like, no, I don't think it's time yet. Well, Delilah's just going to have to get over it, you know. And 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 he's like, no, but it's really important. And, and she's like, well, what? Every time Delilah's feelings get hurt or something like that. And, and he was like, "Uh, it's not about Delilah. He's like, it's about upsetting Maya. And her feelings, her face went, Bloop. now she realizes Maya don't care too much for her right now. So she needs to roll it back. Anyway, what's next? Nate and his dad sitting in there waiting for Christine. Really, Nate? Nate is making me sick. He seems like such a wimp sometimes. Why are you waiting for Christine? You know her ass ain't coming. Even the white lady sitting there, you she embarrassing us in front of the white people. The white lady sitting there going, this is something that your, your wife will always say she's coming up to 15 minutes before time and never shows up. Hmm. Yeah, well, she's going to want to make a decision about it. This is Nate, you know, because her son is going to be, boy, please, screw her. Screw her, Nate, man. So anyway, his father office said him and his wife were talking, and they want him to move in with him, and they're already looking at the garage, and they're going to try to fix it into some type of suite where they could, you know, fix it up and put his own kitchen and stuff in there just for him and his son which is so nice, little Dion, right? Isn't that nice of them to do that? But then we learn later on the father's doing that because he failed them as a, as, as children, you know? He wasn't there for them. He didn't wasn't there watching them grow up and doing stuff with them or whatever, whatever he was doing. We forgot, I forgot the whole story and I don't even care about it because I get disgusted about these men who don't be there for their kids and then they come later in life when all the hard work has been done by mama. I have a problem with it because I was that woman. Don't try to get into it in, in, in their life now. You remember Shaq? Remember Shaq made that song? Said Phil's his dad. Because his real dad didn't have nothing to do with him. And then when he became a famous basketball player, uh, 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 didn't Phil, didn't, didn't his father want to show up, right? <sighs> Come on, y'all. Men, have a spine. Stop, uh, stop, stop being stupid. Take care of your kids. Anyway, who else? Expose a uh, wire transfer. Oh, the, that wire transfer to um, Osborne and Tamara. Here it is, mediation day, and Osborne don't have the the the, the verbiage in there that Lee, not Leah, that uh, D D Delilah wanted in there. So what she did was told the judge. And she exposed the wire transfer information, how it was put on there after the laptop was stolen because they didn't use the right software and all this stuff. But then she thought that would help him change his mind and put that verbiage in, but it didn't. And it, because he felt that if he put that in, it would leave him open to attack by Leah. And so that's why he didn't do that. Then, um... As he's talking to the judge and, and Leah, I mean, and um, Tamara outside about this verbiage, he gets all up in his stuff and calls Delilah a bitch and everything. And like, that little biatch in there that you call a soul sister, you did, did, did. I was like, what? Even the judge took offense. She, cause she like, she, is, she black too. She like, wait a minute, hold up. And Tamara was pissed. She was sitting there and she had to answer his question. Mm, mm, mm. He said, I'm your client. You got to tell me. And she told him it would leave him open. He said, well, should I sign it? She said, no. She had to do it to cover her job. I understand it. And Delilah probably does too, but she's still pissed. You know, she's still going to be pissed. You know how Delilah is. So anyway, Casey cooks for Tamara. Because y'all know last episode, Casey jetted out while she was sleeping. You don't do that. You're you engage. You living together. Whatever it is, you don't just jet, okay, without telling your significant other. Anyway, so she he's cooking for her and all this stuff, and 
she tells him, she mentions something about, oh, we got to see the space for our engagement dinner. Wynn looked out, looked, uh, hooked us up with it. And he says, speaking of your boy, Wynn, and he tells him about that letter that he wrote to Jamal from the, from the Chamber of Commerce or something like that. And she was like, what? It was regarding reparations. And he did not like it. And she didn't like it either. She said, it sounds like him. And so he gets up and said, you know, you need to talk to your boy. She said, yeah, I'm going to talk to him. But she, so he gets up to leave. She's like, oh no, hold up. Wait a minute. Stop. You ain't going nowhere till we talk about Riley, baby. He said, what? We could go, go. No, 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 no. Sit down. She had him sit down. I was like, oh, okay. Now she sounded like she was talking to him like he was a dog. Sit, er, rough. Er, er. No, I don't know. That's the sound to me. <laughs> but he sat down and he listened and she was like, uh, where were you? And why were you there? And he didn't want to talk. He asked for a pass and he asked her to trust him. We already starting this already? Okay. Trust him, but she's not trying to hear it. And she says, you know, he, he said he would tell her soon, but he can't tell her right now. She said, well, I'll tell you one thing. You better tell me before I jump that broom. Else there ain't going to be a jump. Okay. Then there was um Delilah is asking Demetria to go with her to the VA to see Nate because she said he's going to need a lawyer and she can't do it for whatever reasons, you know. And so they learn at then that's when they're there and they learn that the father, Chief Connolly, has offered Nate a place to stay to move in with them. And Delilah's like, oh, you know, she's feeling some kind of way because she's still mad at her father. She can't get it. She probably's older, older sister. So she that's how she's feeling. And. Then we learn the back history about Delilah's father, why she's so angry with the father and stuff, what Chief Conley did, and you know. And so when she's telling all this stuff, after she finished, Demetrius said, wow, he must have been, he must have felt terrible. And she's like, who? Delilah's like, who? Your father. If that's the way it went down, he should have felt terrible. Nate said, exactly. She's like, oh, please. You know, she ain't. We, we feel it. He feeling terrible. Come on. That's like these men. Some men, they don't look after their kids and they don't do all this stuff. They ain't sitting around feeling terrible about it. So it's crazy when people say that because she don't, she is so on Delilah's that person. And I'm probably more like that person. Like he don't care. He was partying, having a good time, making kids all over the place. You know, that's how I feel. Not that her father was doing that, but I'm just saying anyway, who else? Uh, Tamara, bye, bye, bye. Oh, so Delilah's upset with her. And as they leave in, she, she gets up and wants to leave at that point. And she gets up and leave. And they leave in. And, you know, Demetrius like, I'm sorry to make you upset. I'm not upset. <laughs> She's like, okay. And she don't say nothing. And then uh, she gets a call from Harper. And when she's repeating everything Harper's saying, she said, oh, that's Demetrius. Go, oh, that's such and such. She said, I know where that is. She said, okay, still upset. <laughs> she's like, still upset. Trying to act like she not. She knows she's still, still upset. I was laughing. So then, um, oh, what happened after that? Uh, Demetria, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Tamara speaks to Wynn about that Chamber of Commerce letter. Now, they were seeing the space. And then she tells her honey, Casey, to give them a minute. And she goes in on him about that letter. And that him and his father signed. And she didn't like it. She was like, what do you, why do you have a problem with reparations tax? She said, everybody who's on that letter got Confederate flags hanging in their offices. She was, she was going in. She was pissed. She said, get, get off the white side and get on the right side. I said, oh, no, she didn't tell the white man, get off the white side and get on the right side. But he told her it won't be that easy. You know, that about his father. I have the last name. I, I'm a junior and I'm still having issues trying to get stuff passed. But you're a partner now and maybe me and you can scoot him out some kind of way. Scoot him out. She said, help me scoot my dad out of the firm. And then we could do whatever we, we want to do. And he, she's like, and how long are you talking about? Because first of all, he stood up and said, you know, when she was complaining and stuff, he said, look, you know how hard I fought to get you in here. She said, hold up. Ain't you out there reparations? He was like, I'm not saying that. She's like, I ain't you. He made it seem like she, she there cause she a reparation. And she's like, I worked my butt off to get here. Tell him, tell him girl, let him know. So, um, he asked her to give her time to make this work. And he broke it down what he was talking about. And he was telling her to make tick about, 
Um, um, she said, how long? He said, maybe one or two years. She said, two years. He said, yeah, you got to learn to love the long game. And that's where we get that title, the long game, you know? And so she says, I'm in. And so she's down for that. Two years is not really that long after you make partner, but you know, anyway, what? Nine. Leah picks up her check. Oh, Leah comes in to pick up her check. Right. And, um, where is it? She, she was saying how she's a good person. You know, she's talking about, you know, sorry, Delilah, you know, this, that, and the other. She said, but I'm still a good person. Delilah looked at her like she was cuckoo crazy. She was like, a good person? I'm sorry to tell you, but a good person would not have kept so much info from me and hung me out to dry so many times. I said, you better tell her, Delilah. She was pissed. And so when that was going on, Harper and Demetria came to the door and said, we need to talk to you. They said, oh, we're almost finished. She said, it's urgent. You know, like, so she came out there and they let her know that that form, that they, that information that she um, asked them to get had Leah was the last person to have um, used that internet phone number. That's what it was, the internet phone number. So here it comes. <sighs> Delilah rolling her eyes up in the head like, I'm done. She goes in there to Leah and says, is this you? Is this you? Yes. You know all the faces she be making. Y'all notice all the faces that, <laughs> that Leah makes? She be making all these faces and acting all strange and stuff. Well, anyway, Leah says she did it. And then she broke it down, what happened and why she did it and all this stuff. And Leah's like, and, 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 uh, <laughs> Delilah's like, wait a minute, you already knew all this information that I worked so hard to, to discover? Like, she didn't have to work that hard. She could have just gave it to her. That there was proof that Fred already knew about the problem and that Gary had requested the missile. She's, she's like, like, you knew all this stuff and could have given it to me? Yeah, because you would have tried to make it about you and save the world, and that is not what I signed up for. I'm sorry, you know, about Nate and having to do it, but you would have made it. Oh, my God. I know she wanted to choke her like, <laughs> you know. So then um, she said, um, do you understand how many hours and hours and hours I worked on your case, this case, and how many other cases I turned away for this case? She said, I basically lost my best friend because of this. And you knew all this stuff all the time. She said, oh, don't try to play innocent. She said, you got your 30%. All about money with Leah. It's all about the money. She said, that's 30% of the money. She said, I wanted 100% of justice. Justice. And she said, you owe me. You got to give me something. She said, you got to give me something. I don't care what it is. She said, and if you can't do it for me or for you, she said, do it for Nate. And she's like, Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I was like, oh, come on. <sighs> so, um, what else? There was something else. I feel like I'm missing something. But she was, she said, give me something just on Osborne that Osborne knew. That's what it was. So, Leah, I guess, gave her something because later on in the episode, um, Delilah did say something to, uh, she did go and, and visit, um, Fred Osborne. She she went to see Fred Osborne, and he's like, who are you here on behalf of? She said, I'm here on behalf of the truth, baby. The truth. And I was like, okay. So she tells him about the email from October 10th, 2019, and that it he he knew of the problems already, and that she had located um his um pile, what's the guy named Rick Pattengale, and that she had a testimony from him. And he was like, what? He said, um, he's looking at her like, um, what do you want? She said, well, I don't want you to go to jail. I want you to do the right thing. And she, he said, uh, what did he say about, um, how much is the right thing? What's, how much is, how much is the right thing or something? He said, cause he was like, how do we put this behind us? That's what he said. How do we put this behind us? And she said, the only way to put it behind you, cause it ain't us. The only way to put it behind you is to put putting something bigger in its place and he said how much bigger she said let's start at a hundred million i said okay and he thought about it he was like well played miss conley you got a deal 
And that's how she got what she wanted. So I guess he's going to have to help her fork over money to help all those um, soldiers and stuff who got hurt because of that. I guess even Nate might get a part of it. I'm assuming. I don't know. Anyway, what's the last thing? No, there was... Oh, Delilah and Chief Connolly. Oh, this part was so sweet. I like that. Delilah and Chief, Con Chief Connolly, they um went to get Nate out of the VA. It was his last day. He was checking out or whatever they call it, dis being discharged out of there and going to his new home. And he said, Dad, I got this. And he want to wheel himself out. And when he's wheeling himself out, he opens the door and everybody's clapping for him. It was beautiful. Oh, my God. I was like, this is so nice. So, um, it was touching. They they were clapping. I guess it was people, staff from the VA and, and maybe staff and doctors. And they were all clapped as he walked and they celebrate him as he rolled on out. But before that happened, Delilah was asking um, her father, um, I hope he's not going to leave all the babysitting up to his wife. And he's like, no, it's probably going to all fall on me. She said, how's it going to all fall on you? She said, because I'm retiring. She said, you said you never retired. She said, well, I am. He said, I'm going to spend this time. You know, I, I need some time to myself. And he wants to spend it with his son and stuff. And he, that's what he told Nate. He said, it might be selfish reasons why I want you to live there, but I want to get to know you and your, your son better and, and do better. I wasn't there for you in the beginning, but I want to be there for you now. So he's trying. He's trying, you know, and that's all you can ask. Anyway, what else was there? It seemed like there was something else. Um, oh, then Delilah suggested that her and the kids come by one day for dinner. And Chief Conley said he would like that a lot. So there was that. So they're trying to mend some of the wounds. Then the last thing was Delilah and her kids show up to Tamara and Casey's engagement party. That was nice. I didn't know children came to it, but they were there. And they meet the mayor and the congressman. And then they meet Jamal. And he introduces himself as the best man. And so she tells Jamal, she tells, um, Tamara tells uh, Marcus that Jamal knows how to play the piano. Marcus is like, oh, really? Let's see what you got. And he goes over there. But meanwhile, Tamara had told these other people that um, Maya was a, uh, you know, a renowned violinist and that uh, Marcus could sing like little, like Marvin Gaye or something like that. So it was cute that she said that. So when they went over to the piano, Jamal started playing. He started playing, but before he, he got, they got there and started, I guess, talking, Tamara and Delilah stepped to the side and they would, um, Tamara was asking about what she said to, uh, Fred Osborne, he called me and blah, blah, blah. And she said, we're not here to talk about that. I don't want to talk about this. This is your night with you and Casey. Like, we can talk about that later. Let's do that. And so Casey, is that when Casey comes by and kisses her? He kisses her on the cheek or something like that. And she made some kind of face, you know, and Delilah caught it. He she caught Tamara's face. And she was like, you happy? Like, what, what was that? And she was like, no, no, I'm fine. We don't have to talk about that now. And she said, come on, T, what's going on? And at that moment when she said, what's going on? You hear the, Jamal playing and hear, hear little Marcus saying, mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Father, 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 you know the song. What's, and he's going, what's going on? And they like, did that just happen? She just said, what's going on? And they started singing, what's going on? So that was too cute. That was funny. And then it ended with um, uh, Delilah. She tells, asked her to spill the tea and she told her what it was about Casey not telling her what actually happened. She said, I'm sure it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Then she looks and said, did you invite Harper? And Harper's running in there looking all crazy. You know, Harper look all strange. And she said, no. So Harper talks to Delilah and she tells her she's apologetic and everything. And said, um, she informed her that there's a warrant out for Mace Cunningham because he was the last person to seen with Vita Nichols. That's the office. That's the company who was calling for a reference for Mace. And she's like, what? And she didn't know where Mace was. She said it early in the show. And when that happened, when she found out that information, little Marcus was in the background. You hear him singing, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Come on, baby, what's going on? Ooh. I love that song. 
Say Marvin, say Marvin. But it that's it, guys. Let me know how y'all feel about this episode. It, it was a good episode to me. I liked it. But I think this is the last one. I'm not sure because they didn't show um scenes from next week's episode. So this might be the last one since this whole thing with Leah is over now. So this is your girl, Barbie J, saying peace.